Okay, boys and girls, so remember your reading strategy to picture this in your head as you're reading it. Remember, we're at the zoo, and Bob's thinking about how he tries to be brave, but he's a little bit afraid inside. Not talking. Often, when I'm with Ivan, we don't even bother talking. We just look out at his domain, at the green grass, and the crazy babies, and the swaggering juveniles, and the hardworking females, and we think of nothing and everything. When you've been through the worst with someone, you appreciate the best. That's why sometimes when he says, hey Bob, it's enough for me to say, hey Ivan. And then we just listen to the palm trees rustle and watch the sawgrass sway. So they just enjoy being with each other. They feel safe when they're with each other. Brave. Once when we were still at the mall, I told Ivan how brave I thought he was. So the mall is where they met each other. Remember, that was the circus that they were in um, at the beginning. Once when we were still at the mall, I told Ivan how brave I thought he was. The way he put up with everything that had happened to him and never stopped being a good guy. Ivan just looked at me, cocked that big old head of his, and nodded a bit. That's not brave, Bob, he finally said. That's just knowing what I can't change. I call it brave, I said. I call it crazy brave. Ivan held a browning banana up to the light, like it was the most beautiful thing he'd ever seen in his long gorilla life. I wondered whether he was going to eat it or draw it. He never knew with Ivan. <clears throat> Seems to me there are lots of ways to be brave, Bob, he said. A tiny mouse named Eek skittered across his cage floor. Hey, Eek, said Ivan. Just checking for crumbs, she said nervously, because she always sounds nervous. Actually, she sounds like this. Just just checking for crumbs, she said. Dibs on all the leftovers, I reminded her. She looked so terrified that I relented. Over there, behind the tire, old carrot top. Respect, Bob, she said, scampering off. Take a small creature like Eek, said Ivan. He scratched his chin with the end of the banana. He did that when he was in a philosophical mood. Maybe brave for a mouse is different from brave for me or brave for you. He looked at me fondly. You're the bravest dog I know, pal. I ain't brave. I chewed on my tail, avoiding his gaze. You are, Bob. Untamed and undaunted, said Ivan, and he chomped off a hunk of banana. He offered the rest to me, but I shook my head. I wasn't feeling hungry. Also, it was mostly just pilling. That's just my, that's just my, my routine, I hesitated. I mean, sure, I'm tough compared to, say, eek, but that's setting the bar pretty low. Oh, you're too hard on yourself sometimes, Bob. I met his eyes. He had these dark brown eyes, deep set eyes, really, really kind ones. Eyes that make you want to admit things and confess to your failures. Once when I was little, just a pup, I did something. Ivan waited patiently. Ivan is the king of patience. I felt myself dashing into a dead-end tunnel. I couldn't escape. I didn't want to go there, not even with Ivan. Oh, never mind. Oh, I yawned. I do that when I'm anxious. Oh, I'm rambling. Bob, Ivan said, you okay? You know me, Ivan. I'm always okay. Always. I slipped away before he could ask me anything more. So is Bob really okay? Is there something he really wants to share with Ivan? And isn't this the coolest thing ever? Bob is telling Ivan, I think you're the bravest thing I've ever seen. And Ivan actually sees how brave Bob truly is too. So think about it. Is there someone who's super brave in your life? Think about that and think about why you think they're brave. But also I want you to think about what makes you super brave. Are you brave? Ruby. Uncle Bob! Ruby races over, clump, clump, across the broad field that's part of the elephant's domain. She's so cute when she runs, like she's determined not to trip on her trunk. Ruby adores me. I make her laugh. I read the room. I lighten the mood. I gotta admit. I am kind of adorable. When I'm with Ivan, I think, pal, we've been through a lot, you and me. We are survivors. When I'm with little Ruby, I think, girl, look at 
you. Hard luck passing. Here you are so much happier, so loved. Ruby, like Ivan, was plucked from Africa as a baby. She ended up in a circus that went bankrupt. Then she got shipped off to Max Mall. Ruby was taken in by dear old Stella. When Stella passed away, Ivan stepped in to play. Well, he was playing elephant dad, I guess. I did my part too, not because I felt like I had to. It just made life easier. Elephant toddlers are a handful. You think humans are bad? Try putting a 200 pound baby elephant in time out. <laughs> Ruby's family. Little Ruby seems much more content at the park, surrounded by her new herd. Old and young and in between, they spoil that, um, that adorable baby like you wouldn't believe. She deserves every minute of it. Kid had a rough start. Seems elephants hang out in packs of females. Now that she's at the park, Ruby has adoptive sisters and aunts and grandmothers galore. In the wild, the elephant guys head off once they're old enough, and they do their own thing. Sometimes I lose track of who's who among the elephants, because they're always taking mud bats, scrambling their smells. <laughs> so remember, Bob can, he knows who's who by the smell, but with the elephants, he can't tell. By the way, what kind of animal actually likes bats? Mud, sure. So he's saying he would like mud bats. Do you guys like taking mud bats? Ivan's art. How's it going, girl? I called the ruby as she stops near the moat, edging the wall. I had cantaloupe for breakfast, Uncle Bob, and it was yummy. And then I took a mud bath. She pauses to take a breath. Do you want to hear a new dog riddle, Uncle Bob? Of course I do, I say, and I catch Ivan's amused glance. What kind of dog is always on time? Asks Ruby. Hmm. You've got me, Ruby. I'm totally baffled, um, befuddled, bewildered. What kind of dog? A watchdog, Ruby explains. Watchdog, get it, Uncle Bob? Not bad, Ruby. Not bad at all, I say. Ivan says it's going to ring buckets, says Ruby. She dips her trunk in the moat and blows bubbles. I think Ivan is on to something there. Did he show you his new picture? Ruby asks. She grabs a tuft of grass and tosses it in the air. I wish I could see it, but I can't because of that silly wall, but he told me all about it. My pal Ivan is quite the artist, just like Julia. Ivan sits up and nods towards a spot on the wall. Another mud mural? I ask. As any good dog knows, dirt plus water equals mud. And mud means mess, and mess means let's roll on this stuff and maybe dig a hole or two or ten. But for Ivan, mud plus a flat surface equals a waiting canvas. So Ivan sees mud and he mean, that means he wants to paint on it when he sees something to paint on. I crane my neck, edging a bit farther down the top of the wall. Don't want to draw attention to myself. Uh, hey, nice, I say. I mean, I'm not an art guy. To me, oh wait, I'm sorry. It's, it says it like this. Hey, nice, I say. I mean, I'm not an art guy. To me, art is a glop of spray cheese on a cheese dog with extra grated cheese on top. Still, I've always admired Ivan's work. It's, Ivan begins. No, I say, don't tell me. Let me guess. Well, you always guess wrong, Ivan says. Not always. You thought my palm tree was a dandelion. Art is in the eye of the beholder, I say. You thought my blackberries were giant ants. Kinyani amples up to join in the conversation. And need I remind you, uh, let me start again. Kinyani ambles up to join in the conversation. And need I remind you that you thought his portrait of me was a chimpanzee with gas? <laughs> the resemblance was striking, I say. Kinyani glares at me. She glares at me a lot. Remember, Kinyani does not like Bob. On the subject of chimps, probably I shouldn't have mentioned the chimp angle. Gorillas aren't as open-minded as, open as dogs. A lot of them have a thing about chimps. 
think they're clowns, but when I look at apes and gorillas, seems to me they have a lot more in common than they admit to. Dogs ain't perfect, but I'll tell you one thing where we rule. Tolerance. For us, a dog is a dog is a dog. I see a Great Dane, I say, howdy. I run into a puggle, it's glad to meet you. How's it going? Smelled, smelled any good pee lately? Go to a dog park and you'll see. We are equal opportunity playful. You sniff my rear, I sniff yours. You don't see that with humans, obviously. Constantly seeing differences where none exist. All those things like skin color, dogs could care less about. You think I won't hang with a Dalmatian because he's spotted? Or a Sharpie because she's wrinkled? I'm not saying I love every dog I meet. Snickers comes to mind. But I'll always give a dog the benefit of the doubt. Life is short. Play is good. And there are plenty of tennis balls to go around. So what he's saying is dogs accept dogs for who they are. And they don't see them different. And that's actually an amazing lesson for us to learn as of right now. Especially just thinking of a classroom. When we go into a classroom, we learn very quickly that we are actually all equals. And some of us are good at some things, and some of us are good at other things. But by the end of the day, or the week, or the school year, at some point, we all need each other. And so if we just walk into places and we learn to respect each other, then um, we will always have each other to lean on. And that's what he's saying. Dogs respect each other. They never judge each other for what they look like. Powerful lesson. Have a good day, everybody.